Welcome to our next session in the NCD online course where we talk about understanding disease causation. This is the second part of a two-part series. The first one was introducing the concept of a cause, the concept of causation, and this part now is giving us different models of causation. Have a look next at the learning objectives for this session. The learning objectives of this module are for you to recall at least three different models of causation, to identify an appropriate model of causation applicable to NCDs, and to compare and contrast different models of disease causation used to illustrate uh, communicable diseases in comparison to NCDs. Now let's get started and introduce the first a simple a model of disease. I think you are all familiar with the linear causal model exemplified by the chain of infection here by this sneezing man. It's based on the, the assumption that one step follows the other in a linear fashion from a reservoir where the, the um, being the infected person where that the virus um, resides um, the exit portal, the transmission uh, either direct or indirect, an entry portal and then causing a disease in a new host. This is a very uh, widely applicable model and has the assumption that at any stage where you are able to cut this linear chain of events you should be able to get a hold of or control the infection. The reason why I introduce this and other models is because they are not only serve to explain what we think about what causes diseases, but also um, logically explain how we think about controlling, curing or preventing the disease. Another model of disease causation is the so-called Swiss cheese model. And that might be a little bit more applicable also to chronic diseases but mostly is used in um, organizational research and accident research. We're saying that there are a number of layers, those slices of cheese, layers of defense or layers of event, and only if they all line up in their holes, then a certain event can occur. Like for instance, an, an airline crash occurs only if um, a whole sequence of events lines up to uh, create the disaster, like that the pilot is asleep, the aut autopilot is not functioning, the weather condition is adverse, and the um, engines are failing. So only in that case all security uh, measures are failing and disaster occurs. Um, one other model of disease. Now let's move further to NCDs and ask ourselves what, what are there the underlying models of disease causation. When I recently looked up what causes obesity on the internet I found this interesting contribution where somebody said that the obesity epidemic is really a subsidy epidemic. And I thought that's an interesting take on how to, what causes obesity. But this person and down there is the link, you can look it up, was saying that actually since 1972 the US is experiencing a lot of agrarian subsidies going into corn and meat and so on. Um, and at the same, since then um, the levels of obesity are going up and he thinks this is the cause of obesity. Well, is, is this um, being explained by a linear um, model of causation or should we look at some wider ones? Because the danger, of course, is if we are saying, and I, I stay with the example of obesity, if the biological cause of obesity is simple, and with that we mean this disbalanced argument, or, or obesity is caused by an imbalance between calories in and calories out, are we then not forgetting the wider social factors contributing to obesity? 
such as changing food habits, declining physical activities at home, at work, in schools, increasing sedentary habits, changing physically, the, the, the changes of the physical environment and so on. So I'm saying that the danger is that if we have a very simple model understanding of the causes, then there's this temptation also that the answers, the recommendations are turning out to be very simple. This balance argument is then turned into, well, let's just get people to eat fewer ca ca calories and exercise more and that surely helps. And surprise, it hasn't helped so far. So what is a better causal model or a better representation of obesity? And now please be prepared for a bowl of spaghettis. Here it is, the obesity system causal map created by the UK Foresight Committee, a government committee of the UK and published in 2006. To really appreciate what is behind this concept of this causal web of factors determining or causing obesity, I recommend you to go to that website www.shiftn.com forward slash obesity. They animated basically this causal map. So go to the website of this one and then, then scroll around on the full map and you will see this spaghetti ball made much easier and better to understand by first broken being broken down into the different clusters so those different factors do cluster together or one can group them in a way that it makes more si sense you have for instance the food consumption cluster or the food production uh, cluster on the very left then in the center you have what they call the core loop that's the energy balance calories in physical ex energy expenditure out we talked about that and then the different clusters and how they interact. And note also um, that there are negative influences and positive influences. I, th I, th I think this is, this is an amazing piece of trying to illustrate the complexity underlying the causes of obesity, much better than any other model so far was able to do. When this was presented in 2006 to the public, it was heavily criticized and ridiculed actually as, as bowl of spaghettis or, or, or the bowels of, of something and so on. But um, I think reality of multi-causal diseases is complex and we just have to find the best way to reflect that complexity. So this is already the first of the multi-causation disease models I wanted to introduce to you, the causal web. And i show you another example before we go to the other three models I wanted to show you. It's again obesity and a very similar but differently structured way and preceded the Foresight Committee um, being published in 1999 by the International Obesity Task Force and they grouped the different factors in a more linear fashion but essentially this is also a web of causation. So if you look there on the very right side again it's the energy disbalance, energy expenditure versus energy intake determining the level of obesity or underweight in a population. So individual factors left of them are factors closer related to individual's behavior or what, whatever determines energy expenditure and, in, um, and intake, work sites, family, home. One level further to the left what occurs in the community or locality from transports to manufactured imported foods. Uh, one level higher if you like or further to the left in this diagram are national and regional factors transport media culture education etc etc and then um, b 
beyond this wall even global factors and they are all somehow related in this causal web um, the arrows go only as you see from left to right and that might be a limitation and not fully reflecting the reality but also you can imagine um, thanks to this uh, structure that um, factors closer to the disbalance might have a bigger impact or more immediate impact than those factors sitting further to the left. They are having then much more an indirect impact to work through other factors than um, finally onto determining the outcome being obesity prevalence in a population. Another example of a causal web. Now let's move on to the next model the onion layers of determinants of disease you might have seen that quite often used being in in the discussion of the social determinants of disease and i can't quite remember where i took this graph from obviously from a publication where the determinants of health were graphically represented by this type of onion as we call it in the middle are the genetic endowment um, determining your health and around that your behavioral choices, beliefs, personality, etc., etc. And then around the next layer of the onion um, are things like the environment, the healthcare system, water quality, infectious disease outbreaks, air pollution, and economics. A rather strange constellation of factors, but I can't remember where I took that um, graph from. The point being, this is the more onion or shell type of illustration of what causes diseases, so more proximal causes and more distal causes in the periphery. Another example s using the same onion is what um, the UK Berkeley Center for Weight and Health produced a couple of years ago. Um, also placing at the center of their interest and their onion um, the child or the uh, level of obesity of, of the child and then as determinants around what happens in the home or in the families um, further away what happens in the school, the community, healthcare system um, all the way up to states or country legislation. And there you can also see on this, this illustration that when you think about interventions if you direct the interventions to the center in this this uh, regards you think about individual changes recommendations um, knowledge education skill motivational changes but if you want to influence the outer layers of the onions then you think of more environmental changes and i'm very comfortable with the term environmental changes including policies because the policy environment is also something we are living in. So now we had the causal web, the onion layers and I'd like to introduce to you another maybe uh, again a little bit exotic model used in chronic diseases, the epidemiological triangle. I'm saying um, a little bit exotic because it clearly comes from the communicable disease, infectious disease model. So here you had the host, the environment and the agent. The agent being the bacteria or the virus producing the disease. The host, obviously the susceptible organism, the, the human being, and the environment um, being factors that permit the transmission, so m moist climates, uh, uh, things like that. And that model was very helpful in disease prevention because uh, wherever you, you um, set on to targeting this triangle and break the lines, you might have success in preventing the disease. Now it was my, my friends and colleagues, Boyd's Swinburne and Gary Egger in 97 and I include their BMJ article in your reading t using this or translating this model into obesity uh, prevention and creating a very 
interesting comparison for that. They essentially said, well, we also have environments, and they termed that then the obesogenic envir environments determining obesity. We have, of course, the, the host, the person becoming obese, and quite often we look at his or her behavior or the biology or the attitudes, etc. And we have some sort of an agent, which is the energy imbalance and the vectors carrying that being the energy density of our food, the portion sizes, um, the vending machines of foods being available um, at every corner and so on. And again, like in communal diseases, depending on which line we want to break or where we want to direct our intervention, we might do very different things. And to have sustainable success, they claim, we should look at the, the whole arrangement of factors. A very interesting paper, a different model of looking at what causes chronic diseases. Now the last one is the PI. As the PI as a multi-causation disease model, I show you first a simple one and then I show you a more complex interpretation. Here's an example of a pie chart concept listing causal factors determining, or as the author said, factors influencing health status. So you have this lovely pie, and the different segments are starting from the top right. Genetic predisposition, 30%, influencing our health status, then 40% life style and behavioral patterns. And interestingly, the 40% look much, much bigger than the 30%, but anyway. Then 10% are determined by medical care shortfalls, 15% um, by social circumstances, and 5% only through environmental exposures. I'll give you the source below of the paper was published a couple of years ago in 2002 by McGuinness and tell you already why I don't like the use of pies because they imply a couple of things which I don't think uh, should be implied and are true. First, they add up, especially in this example, to 100%. So there's no room left for uncertainty or unknown causes. You might say there, well, that, that could be fixed um, by introducing another slice and saying whatever you want, 10% unknown causes or undetermined. Fine, yeah, that could fix it or leave a gap in the pie. But the second one is it fails to show, or let me formulate the other way around, it gives the impression that the different categories of causes, genetic predisposition, lifestyle and behavioral patterns, are very distinct elements. As if a genetic predisposition would not predispone us to certain lifestyles and behaviors, and we know that is. And the other way around, environmental exposure interacts with genetic to determine our health. Social circumstances, as we will say throughout and have already said throughout the whole course, truly determine our lifestyle and behavioral choices we have. So what? where's the interaction between this one and that one? This cannot be illustrated by such a pie, but rather this pie is saying 100% of factors influencing our health status can be explained by these five different components. Simple, but I think not sufficient. Several years ago, the pie concept of disease causation was picked up again by Ken Rothman, but much more sophisticated and developed. He actually talked about constellation a constellation of factors and some some people uh, 
use the analogy of pizza slices and and the whole pizza and not not a pie anymore he also emphasized that those pizza slices those factors constellation of factors um, constituting a disease are interacting and if you read the paper which we include into the compulsory reading because it's such an important paper then you also find out that he says that those different components do not necessarily need to occur all at the same time so this is a 2d illustration but um, truly we would need a 3d illustration of this uh, these causal pies or pizza slices. What you see here is um, a disease made up by three slightly different but sufficient causal complexes and each of them having five component causes. And amongst those three causal complexes only one of the pizza slice is present in all three of them. If you have a look, it is segment A being present in st disease state 1, 2 and 3. And this then Rothman is calling a necessary cause. Because this model is so important, I will include into this course a special dedicated exercise where you ex can explore more about the sufficient component model of causation from Ken Rothman by not only reading his original paper but I also give you an exercise and access to educational website. So let me summarize this session. One of the most important features of the cause and effect ideas underpinned in epidemiology is that diseases virtually always a result of the interplay of different factors such as the environment, the genetic and physical makeup of the individual and especially in infectious diseases the agent of disease. Diseases attributed to single causes are invariably done so by definition. In that case the fact that tuberculosis is caused by the tubercle bacillus is basically a matter of definition because in epidemiology or in public health we know that there are other many other factors causing tuberculosis than only the bacillus including malnutrition and overcrowding or a link with NCDs as I sh have shown such as diabetes. Causation for multifactorial conditions as we have in NCDs are much better captured by several well-known disease causation models I introduced in the segment such as the onion model, the triangle, the pie, the pie chart and the Ken Rothman's composite pies and the web of causation or in statistical terms often called directed acyclic graphs. And with that we finish part B of the introduction session Understanding Disease Causation where we looked at the models of causation.